Hey, what's up? Welcome to the No Tracers podcast. This podcast is all about urban exploration, tips, tricks, and crazy stories from explorers all over the world. Today on the podcast, I am speaking with Rumham Revenge. You may have seen some of his creepy horror themed photography on Instagram. You may have seen some of his videos on TikTok as well. And uh, today we're going to be talking about his exploration history, how he got started, what he likes to explore, and some stories of his explorations. But before we jump into this episode, I need to, first of all, welcome you if you're new. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button. There's a new episode of No Tracers that comes out every Friday, so I don't want you to miss an episode. I've got a bunch of guests that will be coming on this podcast, and if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, please go back and check them out. The first few are tips and tricks with just me uh, talking to you guys about how to get into urban exploring, the gear you need, how to deal with security guards, things like that. So if you guys are interested, go back, listen to the previous episodes. And then if you guys are interested in buying a book from me, I have a book out called No Tracers, An Urban Explorer's Diary. It's full of photography and stories from my explorations. And you can pick up a copy at notracers.com slash shop. And you can also get photo prints over there and you can read blog posts, see my photography, all that good stuff, just in case you guys want to get to know me a little bit more. But in the description, there are going to be a bunch of Amazon links to gear. If you guys need backpacks, solar chargers for your gear, if you need a GoPro, a DSLR camera, if you need boots, anything, uh, there is a bunch of links down in the description that I think will help you guys out. I need to take a second to thank our first partner, which is Liquid Death Water. I am now a death peddler. If you don't know what Liquid Death Water is, don't worry. You've got an ad coming in three, two, one. From the streams of the Austrian Alps comes a new kind of water. A water that is sure to raise you from your grave. If you're tired of buying cases of plastic water bottles that contain carcinogens and God knows what else, or if you're trying to lower your waste footprint. Liquid Death comes in beautifully rugged aluminum cans. Murder your thirst with a can of Liquid Death. Check the link in the description and use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Liquid Death, murder your thirst. With that all being said, let's jump into this episode with Rumham Revenge. Can you please introduce yourself and what it is you do to the No Tracers audience? Uh, my name is Nick. I am known as Rumham Revenge on, uh, on the social media. I've been exploring for about five years and I've been able to use that uh, kind of in hand with my artistic ambitions of uh, I guess, creating creepy artwork. So take me back to the very, very beginning. Um, what got you into exploring in the first place? Well, it kind of starts with my creative side. Um, I've been making creepy stuff ever since I was a kid. I was born on Halloween. Uh, I was making home videos horror videos when I was like in fifth and sixth grade. I, uh, I've just always been a very creative person. And, um, just one day I was driving and like I say, I've been doing this for about five years now, but, um, I guess you could say five years ago, I was just driving a normal route that I usually drive. And I saw this old farmhouse off a side road I'm just like, wow, that would make a really cool setting for like a short horror video. So I, uh, I turn around and I, and I pull up to it and it was just such a rush. And, uh, you know, I, the house wasn't spectacular, but it was, it was spooky looking. And I, I went inside real quick and it, it was just, I was like, wow, this is, this is great. And I mean, that one house right there kind of kickstarted it all. And um, it's like turned into a huge passion ever since. So did you grow up watching like horror movies and stuff? Did your parents like 
was that like a, a normal thing in your household to watch horror movies? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my dad, he's, he's a lot like me. He would scare the crap out of me any chance he, he got. Um, I mean, artistically he didn't do stuff like me, but, um, but yeah, it's just starting as, as a child. Like I said, I was born on Halloween. So I've always kind of enjoyed spooky things. And, um, my dad was a prankster. He would scare me with stories and horror movies were very common. I think the the first one I remember watching, uh, was this horror movie called dolls. <laughs> and, um, I use a lot of dolls in my work today. Maybe that's where that comes from. But uh, I don't know. I've always enjoyed the feeling of being scared. And especially going into these abandoned houses and buildings, there's that rush and that creepy feeling. And, and um, you know, that's all a part of that as well. But, um, yeah. Uh, horror movies definitely were a big part of my life, still are, and it's inspired a lot of things uh, that I do now. So when did photography and video come into play uh, with your explorations? Was that an immediate thing, like right at the beginning, or did you kind of grow into the photography thing? Oh, it was immediate. Uh, like I said, when I, when I first, I just, when I first saw that old farmhouse, it just clicked. And you know, that was right around the time when cell phones were getting fancier, uh, social media was growing. And, you know, before all that, it was really hard for me to make videos. And, and I, I had actually did not have any interest in photography. It was all, I always wanted to be like a, a filmmaker. And uh, I actually went to college for some video production, but life happened. I, you know, I had some kids and, and just, I took a big break from being creative for a good period of time. But as soon as I saw that house, like I said, I don't know, I just clicked and I checked it out. And then a week later I came back with my dad, had him dress up as this creepy mask guy. And I shot a few videos. That was around the time the, the vine app was um, really getting hot. And so I was making a lot of just six second videos on my cell phone and, uh, it it was just awesome. And then I just started noticing abandoned houses everywhere, like places that I normally would drive, but I just never really noticed them or, or felt the urge to look for that. And, uh, so then I just, like I say, it just opened up a whole new ball game for me creatively. And, uh, I started, like I said, uh, just shooting videos on my iPhone and about, and then I started taking pictures on my iPhone. I was like, well, you know, I'm in here. I might as well start taking pictures. And Vine was about to die. Twitter was about to ax that app, which was devastating to me. And I was like, you know, I guess maybe I'll just start taking pictures. And that's when I got into Instagram. I'm like, you know, you can really tell a good story with a single photo, almost as good as with a creepy video. And that was kind of eye opening for me as well. I had never, like I said, uh, been into photography that much. And it was all, all about video. But then, once again, that was kind of another eye-opening moment I'm like well you know taking pictures is pretty pretty damn fun too and so yeah just from the get-go from that you know that first house I went to that sole purpose was to be taking videos and pictures to turn these adventures into something creative so as far as gear goes, what are you using now? What do you recommend for people? And this could be more than just cameras. I mean, if you have a backpack that you recommend or a pair of boots or a light or anything, uh, what gear would you recommend for new explorers? Well, my gear is pretty, pretty wild. Uh, from, from a technical standpoint, I don't know crap about cameras. I really don't. I, I've got a Nikon, um, D750, which is, it's a really nice camera. I don't 
know what the hell I'm doing with it 90% of the time. <laughs> um, I, I use the same wide angle lens every time. I just, I, I get lucky with some of these pretty good shots I get. But uh, I mean, starting out, you can use anything. You can use uh, cell phones, take beautiful pictures. Um, and then from cell phones, I got a Nikon, I think it was a 5300, which is a, it's a nice, really nice camera to start off with. And it's not terribly expensive, but you know, as, as the passion grows for this, then you're going to want to keep getting more and more stuff. But, um, but that's, you know, like I say, the, the exploring part itself is, it should be fun and the gear all kind of comes secondary with that. As far as other gear, <laughs> I take usually a duffel bag filled with masks and creepy dolls. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite a scene when when I go exploring. I I will, uh, you know, I, nowadays I usually go with other people, and you know, um, people that will be in my pictures. And yeah, I usually have my camera around my neck and a duffel bag filled with masks, dolls, vintage dresses. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I do have a, a light that I bring, an external light, um, just an LED light, just for uh, dark situations. I try to bring a tripod, though I hate using it, and I wish I would use it more, but... I like to get all sorts of crazy angles and I like to kind of be in and out of these places. So, um, I don't really take as much time as I should to use my tripod, but, um, yeah, basically camera tripod, my bag of masks and dolls, as far as, um, other explorers, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody, I guess would probably bring their own unique, set of tools that they use for you know for what they do mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and uh what has been your scariest exploration ah uh, well i wish i wish i had a really really good story for that but i don't um i've been to a lot of places over these past five years and there has been only one house that as soon as I stepped into it, I got the goosebumps. I mean, my, my hair standing up. I'm just like, whoa, what is going on here? And it's just this old farmhouse in the middle of Michigan. Nearest big city is probably an hour and a half away. Just I just kind of stumbled across it. And uh, the one of the windows was open and... I, I went inside and like I said, I immediately got this weird vibe, creepy vibe. Uh, the inside was kind of trashed, but there was still a lot of stuff in there, which those houses are really hard to come by. And I, I walked through the kitchen and through the dining room. And I'm, as I'm turning the corner to walk into the living room, there is a big recliner chair with this huge antique doll sitting in it. And that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and, and stuff doesn't usually scare me. Like I say, I collect creepy dolls for my photo shoots. But this, I mean, someone definitely placed that there. I don't think a lot of people have been in that house because it was so, so isolated. But someone put that damn doll there, and it, and it got me good. And uh, there's all sorts of papers strewn about on the floor. And I, and I went upstairs, and uh, there was this old rotting bed up there, and it had a bunch of little doll heads on it. And like I say, this whole time, I just I, I have the goosebumps and like this overbearing feeling of doom, and. You know, it's like, what happened in this house? And then I went into a bedroom and it was like stepping into a time camp capsule. There was a, a calendar still on the, on the wall. It was like from 1964 or something. And the closet still had all these 
old clothes in it. It was from a guy. I, I was in obviously a guy's room and there's all these letters with like two cent stamps on it. I didn't really go through too much stuff in there, but it was just very odd because downstairs there was a calendar in the kitchen that said 1992. So I don't know. It was just a very weird old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And, and, and I usually don't get creeped out. And I've been to asylums and, and all sorts of just weird places. But this one house will always stick out in my mind is like, I wonder if something bad happened here. Cause it really felt like there was some kind of presence in there following me around in that damn creepy doll. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy, man. Yeah, I call that feeling the darkness. Uh, I did a previous episode of this podcast all about that feeling that you get. I've been into a lot of asylums and a lot of creepy places as well. And I've only felt this in like four different places that I've been in. And it's almost like, like there's a, like you said, like a presence there. Like it's hard to explain to people unless they have felt it. And I think urban explorers are like the only kind of people that know this feeling. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to describe it. And, and, and maybe I'm just not like, I don't know, consciously open as much as some people are to that. I'm, like I said, I'm very surprised. I don't feel that more often because I'm pretty sure some of these places have had some crazy stuff happen in them, but uh, just that one house really really got me and it really makes you think about you know what happens in some of these places you just don't know if something horrible or some sort of tragedy tragedy has happened you know Mm -hmm. and then uh what is your favorite history of a place that you've explored uh this is this is the place i've been to um, somewhat recently i would have to say that Central State Hospital in Georgia. It was once known as the the world's largest insane asylum. And I, my buddy that I went with, I went with a small group of people, but they were kind of telling me about the history as we were walking around. And I mean, this place is like a sprawling, it's almost like a mini city. Supposedly there's a hundred abandoned buildings and um, the whole facility and the whole area was, was created in the 1800s. You know, it was called something ridiculous, like the home of the insane and lunatics. I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact name, but it was something like uh, very ridiculous. And um, there's just some really crazy stuff that happened there. And, and I had read that at one point, in the 1950s, the place had been investigated for because uh, there was rumors that there was a snake pit. <laughs> and then um, what wasn't actually a rumor but was real, some of the, the patients from the mental hospital uh, were actually hired in as doctors. So literally the, the insane patients were helping run the insane asylum so it's like who knows what crazy stuff went on at that place and then um, also on the grounds there's this huge like memorial with these small little um, gravestones there are they all got just numbers on them but they represent like the thousands of unmarked graves of the patients that were buried on the facility grounds and um, a lot of those graves you just don't know where they are the markers removed or, or, or whatever so going into that uh, that whole facility and the, the insane asylum grounds knowing that kind of stuff it it was really a really cool place to visit Wow. Yeah. There's something super interesting about asylums. Like if I could go back in time to see an era of time, it would be like the late 1800s when all this crazy shit was going on in asylums, just because like, like you don't, we don't even know half the things that happen in these places because most of it has been kept a secret or has been, you know, there's no documentation of anything that happened. So it's crazy. Like asylums are one of my favorite places to explore just because there's so much unknown history there. 
And then, uh, do you have goal places, places you haven't been that you would like to go? Do you have like a list, a running list of, uh, goal places? I don't really. I just kind of go to places as they are, as they come along, um, meeting up with people and, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in Michigan here and I've already explored the hell out of Detroit and Flint and stuff. And, um, so as far as specific abandoned places that I want to go to, I really don't have any, I, one goal I have, and this is going to sound absolutely probably stupid and ridiculous, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, I often just daydream about like buying this creeper van <laughs> and, and filling it with my, my masks and my, and my dolls and, and all my creepy props and like just doing a national tour, <laughs> like the, the, the creepy rum ham revenge national tour and, and just being able to take that, all that stuff and go to every city and just have like a small meetup with, with the group of people in each city and, 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 and do a photo shoot and hit some local bandos. Um, that would be like my ultimate goal is to be able to find funding or, or maybe, you know, win the lottery or something <laughs> to be able to do that. Uh, I was, I was talking in the fall to a, a filmmaker in Texas and he was trying to get funding to do like a, a YouTube series, a uh, behind the scene series to show kind of have like a camera crew, crew follow me into these abandoned houses and, and, and just document, you know, video me doing what I do, going into these houses, exploring, bringing in and models and, 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 making them look creepy and taking these pictures. And he even talked about incorporating a makeup artist to do horror makeup on some of these models. Uh, unfortunately, nothing's come of that yet, but those are some of the goals I would like to achieve to, you know, just, I guess, have some sort of internet TV series based on, and doing this kind of stuff. Cause uh, incorporating the horror and the masks and the dolls and, and all that. It's, it's a whole nother element to exploring. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people would enjoy seeing that. Oh yeah. I mean, even as like a Netflix show, you know, I mean, they've got the abandoned Netflix show, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, uh, it's just different explorers, you know, traveling around. Seth Lawless is featured in it. Um, and, yeah, I, I think doing a web series would be a great idea. And I hope that comes to fruition for you uh, because I personally would love to see the behind the scenes of what you do. And as a videographer myself, I love filming behind the scenes content. So I would love to see that kind of stuff. Definitely. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've, uh, earlier this year I got on TikTok. I, good job. <laughs> I had always Everyone heard such horrible TikTok. things about that app and I it was dreading it <laughs> and I almost deleted it after a couple weeks, but I, I started posting some behind the scene clips of my adventures in Atlanta and New, New York and New Jersey. And all of a sudden they started blowing up, you know, one of them on there has got almost a million views and I'm like, yeah, so people really do like to watch these things. And like you said, the Netflix series, I mean, just, seeing people going into abandoned places and, and learning the history and all that stuff is almost a show in upon itself. But then you add in also, you know, like I say a whole new creative element of spooky masks and, and dolls and um, people like scary stuff too. And you combine the two. I just think, I just hope someday I'd be able to uh, be able to do something like that. I believe it'll happen for you, man. I like what you're doing and, and your content is incredible. So, I mean, I, I know people are going to love something like that. If you could live in one place that you've explored for one week, which place would it be? Uh, I would have to be central state hospital. Um, kind of like what we were talking about earlier asylums. They're just, those are my favorite places to explore just because of their history. And, and they're usually, huge 
and you know, I've been to one in New York. And those are the type of places that you can't really even scratch the surface if you go for a day. Uh, the one in Georgia just has so many buildings. We were there for one day and that's it. And we only went into three. And a part of that is just because, you know, we all do take in props and masks and we, we really focus on the creative photography while inside them versus just exploring so that does take up a lot of the time but yeah that place i would love to spend a whole weekend and uh, really go through each room and and each floor and each building and it would that would be that would be amazing and then uh what what is the farthest you've traveled to explore the farthest would have to be New Orleans. I uh, that was right when I first got started. I was still using my iPhone to take pictures, and I had always wanted to go to New Orleans, so I just got myself a ticket and went down there by myself for five days. I I was pretty new to all this exploring stuff, and I had such big ambitions. You know, they had like the Charity Hospital down there and the Six Flags and all these amazing abandoned things and. Uh, in New Orleans, and I and I get down there, and you know all those places are heavily guarded, and I kind of freaked out. <laughs> ended, up, ended up not really getting getting into any of the the hospitals or anything, but I, I drove around a lot and and got some pretty cool pictures of just some of the neighborhoods down there that. Uh, were affected by Hurricane Katrina, and, and there was some pretty decent bando hot spots down there. And I just took a lot of exteriors, a lot of exterior pictures. And uh, it was still, I went to a haunted plantation, uh, got a little tour of that. That was fun. So it, it was it was a good trip. It was worth going all the way down there. I guess I'm up in Michigan. Um, I think that's like a 15 hour drive, but I, I did fly. And, uh, and normally I drive when I do these trips, just because I do have so many props that I bring, you know, I'm not really going to get on an airplane with a four foot creepy <laughs> doll, uh, hanging, you know, stuffed in my luggage. So, oh no, this is my carry on. <laughs> right. So, uh, generally I drive, I, I stuff my car full of this stuff and I have been pulled over and I have been searched, uh, going into Canada. We spent a half hour interrogating me. Uh, because of all of the weird things that I have, but it's not illegal to be a weirdo. So um, I've never <laughs> gotten in trouble for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, New Orleans, that was fun. Um, it was it was worth the trip, though. That's the farthest I've went. Amazing. And then my final question for you is, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started exploring? Uh, it's a tough one, I guess. I... I pretty much do everything exactly the same as I did when I started off. I, you know, I've been very lucky and all these hundreds of places that I've went into, I've never ran into really any problems, never been in any kind of trouble, knock on wood. Uh, so, I mean, as far as going back and, and, and talking to my young explorer self, I, I really don't have much advice for that. I mean, I just keep, I just been keep doing what I've been doing this whole time. Um, I mean, if anything, I would go back and I guess just give myself a high five for going into that first house because, because I did that, it's really opened up a whole new passion and, and drive and just a wonderful hobby for me. And it's opened up so many doors for friendships and creating this really unique art and I've been to amazing places. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything at all. I, I would just go back and, and, and tell myself, good job for going into that first creepy ass house. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. And then if anybody wants to see your work or if they want to maybe hire you to do a portrait shoot session or if they want to ask you some questions, where can they find you? I, I'm usually on Instagram the most, just Rum Ham Revenge. Everything I do on social media is Rum Ham Revenge. Uh, Instagram is, is mainly... I answer my DMs on there and that's where I post most of my, my work. Uh, you can also find all my video stuff on TikTok as Rum Ham Revenge. Um, those are my main two social media outlets, but anybody is welcome to, to send me a message anytime if they have any questions about anything or advice. And, and if anybody's looking for some, inspiration um or looking to get themselves creeped out i recommend checking out my gallery on instagram for sure (laughs) perfect thank you so much for coming on no tracers i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today absolutely thank you so much for having me on this was a lot of fun All right, guys, that was my episode with Rumham Revenge. Please be sure to follow him on all of his social media. I will put his links down in the description for you guys. If you liked this episode, please do me a favor and leave a rating and some feedback. And if you do that, take a screenshot of your feedback and send it to me at no.tracers on Instagram, and I will send you a free signed photo print. It literally takes you 30 seconds to leave a rating and feedback. So do that for me, and you'll get a signed photo print out of it. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of No Tracers. If you guys hit subscribe, you will be notified when the next episode comes out, which will be next week. And like I said, if you guys want to see my blog posts or get a copy of my book, head to notracers.com. I will talk to you guys soon. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Go out. Go create something. And remember, leave no trace.